You ready? Wait. Welcome to Sad Boys, a podcast about feelings and other things also. I'm Jarvis. I'm ready, yeah. Yeah, I was... You're ready? You were supposed to oh, say... Oh, I'm ready to go, baby. Um... So we, no hesitation. You did you, but you you've got to introduce yourself. Did did I did I stutter? Yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, you Rats. did. Rats. Okay, yeah. Um, Jordan, I'm Jordan. <laughs> yeah, can't Jordan. get fooled again. <laughs> can't get fooled. Dude, we, we, uh, it's a funny recording day because we jumped into it like a separate extra thing we'll record, which we'll show you in a little bit. But um, during a little little classic Jordan bathroom break, you know, um, you know what I'm like. <laughs> Mr. Bladder over here. Uh, we got caught up watching uh, clips of George Bush slipping up vocally. And that clip, man. It's only fun because of hindsight. Yeah. And I said this, I said that I cannot watch the equivalent Biden compilation because it will make me sad as he is currently in office. Yeah, it's like watching Saw. <laughs> it's like I'm watching it, this to yeah, make myself uncomfortable. Doesn't make him any less of a terrible person, but it just um all my favorite war criminals. Uh so welcome to Sad Boys. Uh, welcome to uh, <laughs> We got a saying in, <laughs> in Sad Boys. It goes, <laughs> it's probably in Texas. Probably t- it's, Texas, it's, it's Tennessee, in as well. Tennessee as well. It goes, uh, howdy. <laughs> <laughs> it goes, I love you. I'm sorry. Um, what, what's going on, dog? <laughs> oh, I like this version <laughs> yeah, of you. What's, go, what's this going on, cool. dog? This guy's fine. This guy's jazz. He? <laughs> oh, he doesn't even care about no. nothing. Dude, how are you doing? How's your Wait, I just said, how are you doing? <laughs> no. So what's going on? You no, can't no. just... That's like, um, what's going on? Have you seen those things where it's like dudes are bad at texting? Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> like I saw a tweet that was like, um, my, my friend dated a guy who was six ten, and he just asked, how are you three times in a row? <laughs> what's up? How's what's up? Man? How's it going though? How's and it's up? Like you just asked, I, I just said, it's going well. Dude, sometimes I probably want to just open it. <laughs> I recently got uh, drinks with Evan, uh, our friend Evan and I, we hadn't caught up in a while and I just, we, the conversation started up with what is up like at my very inorganic what is up Mm -hmm. and then he replied what's up (laughs) (laughs) dude dudes do not know how to communicate it's like it's like like a game of text (laughs) who's gonna who's gonna juke and And ask how we're doing dude How's your week what's going? Up? What's the week? How's what's up what's, with the how's week? It, how's your week, my man? <laughs> so you can't just keep doing that. Week mode. <laughs> um, has, has your week, by the way? My week has been good. It's a bit slower than I would like by my own doing, but that's okay. And I feel like something exciting is happening this week. Oh, but it doesn't come to mind. It is for context. We are recording this on January 5th, January 6th nope. of tomorrow. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It is no. 2021 and we have got some plans. No. Okay. No. <laughs> um, we're, we're just like planning holiday plans for the, for the yeah. Sad Boys team because we, you know, the holidays are coming up and we want to make sure that we're not making anybody work over the holidays. <laughs> or if we... If anybody else isn't around that we make, whoever is around work overtime with no pay. Mm-hmm, exactly. It's kind of the- We're putting the finishing touches. You hear that, Jacob? Yeah. It gave a thumbs Jacob up. Gave a thumbs up. He's calling HR. <laughs> it's, my phone's ringing. <laughs> <laughs> what, you're suing me? <laughs> oh, Jordan, I have a big announcement. Ah. That, how's my week going? Uh, it's, it's going incredible. Okay. Because I have a huge, gigantic, exciting announcement. You gotta calm down, man. I'm so amped. You're being insane, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I have one of those charged <laughs> lemonades, dude, and I'm fucking, <laughs> I'm fucking lit oh, right now. I've got like a wily e. coyote heart beating, <laughs> yeah, popping out a out. foot in front of me. We just put the finishing touches on the Sad Boys live show that we just had live in Los Angeles, and it is available on demand for purchase, a one-time purchase on our Patreon. So you can head over to patreon.com slash sadboys or click the link in the description and you will be able to pay three bucks to see our live show. With many, many wonderful guests. And I think With many be- wonderful guests. So the guests, Eddie Burbeck, Chad Chad, Ify Wadi Way, and Nikki Jakey. Oops, guilty. Guilty. Um, <laughs> guilty, those are our friends. Those are our friends. But... Also, if you don't want to, if you're already a patron or you want to become a patron for as low as $5, you will get 
every Sad Boys Nights ever, of which there's like 30 or 40 now. And, uh, and then you'll also get the live show uh, in addition. So that's a great value. That's like two bucks for every like 35 extra episodes of the show. And, and you get the, for two extra bucks, you get 35 extra episodes of the show. So you can either buy the video on demand, or if you're already a patron, you get access to the live show, boom, easy, or you can become a patron and get access. So there's a, there's a myriad of ways to watch the live show, but it's something we're very proud of, something that we want to do again in the future. And we also wanted to give a thank you to everybody who was there in the audience. Yeah. Thank you so much. I, I'm still riding high. It's been what, two weeks, week and a half since we recorded it. I'm yeah. just still, I genuinely just like, I've mentioned this before I think of the show, but very early on it was we were big into achievable goals for the mm-hmm. podcast. Mm-hmm. And we also still worked at, in tech at the time. So yes. like, what are our KPIs? How do we deliver on this? Right. And one of the big long-term, uh, okay, I'm um, also, uh, <laughs> long-term. Obje- objectives and key uh, results. Was doing a live show at any scale in any way. And then this was a bigger scale than I had anticipated back then and, and sold out and everyone was wonderful. And uh, yeah. the guests were great, format was great. Just a proper chuckle. A proper good time. Yeah. Okay, here's something that happened. But before we get into that, we have a brief word from today's sponsor, Babbel. Babbel is an app designed to help you start learning a new language in as little as three weeks. All of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, rooted in real life situations, and spoken by humans not robots. So instead of wasting time and money on expensive tutors or mobile apps that are little more than games, use Babbel's conversation-based teaching. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts. My Spanish is rusty and I traveled to Mexico recently and I was afraid to speak. But when I go back, I'm babbling it up. We here at Sad Boys have a special limited time offer for our listeners only where you can get 55% off your Babbel subscription. Just head on over to babbel.com slash sad. 55% off at babbel.com slash sad, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash S-A-D. Rules and restrictions may apply. Thanks to Babbel for sponsoring this video. Now back to boys. It's, now we're back. They're still here. <laughs> I, went to, I went to Dave and Buster's recently for a birthday party. And which is the correct adult place to have a birthday party. Yeah. It was a 10 year old's birthday party. <laughs> it was a 10 year old's birthday party. Yeah, you were a clown. Dave and Buster were there. <laughs> um, I uh, I took an Uber because I was like, oh, I'm going to like have a Bev. I'm going to have a little nice. uh, Patrick Beverly. <laughs> um, this is basketball. I'm two in the NBA right now. Um, <laughs> I got into this Uber person, you know. Um, they start talking to me and I'm like, okay, cool. I can, I can deal. You know what? I'm, I'm feeling good today. I can chat a little bit. They're like, you're going to Dave and Buster's. I'm like, yes, I am. And they're like, Dave and Buster's is kind of weird, right? Cause it's like, it's for kids, but also adults. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's true. And I'm like, they should just pick one. And I'm like, for sure. And, um, you know how you're <laughs> you like, pick one. I'm like, you know, you look the damn, that's crazy. You're giving him like the, <laughs> the Uber ride. Um, they should make one just for kids where their parents aren't allowed to take them. Well, they, and then they were like, uh, yeah, they should just lean into the adult thing. They should get strippers. This is a, I should say, because you're thinking of a picture in your mind of who it is. And it's just like a, you know, mid twenties woman. Just saying, just saying it's time for strippers now. Yeah. It's like, you should, you should have. Like, I just want to say it wasn't like a gross dude because that's what it sounds like. So it was a little bit more like jokey. And I was like, oh, OK, because I think I would have uh, taken it a different way if a a, a gross guy was kind of like they should have fucking strippers or whatever. Yeah, that, that, yeah that's a tricky one because it's like, hey, noble profession as 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 cool as anything else. Oh, yeah. Odd to contrast it, even though they're saying this is in the adult only scenario, even introducing it in a and a building I associate with children is yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah. Just being like, hey, what if we did it at a preschool? And I'm like, eh, just don't well, bring, that, don't tie those thoughts. I was certainly thoughts. immediate. I was already a little bit uncomfortable before this even came up. And so at this point, I've just turned into smile and nod mode where I'm like, oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. yeah, no, for sure. I love Trump. Dude. And then they said, um, if they have strippers, then no one will pay attention to the games. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. And then she goes, 
well, that's an idea. <laughs> like she was having a conversation with herself. Yeah, indeed. Somebody has a tight 10 they've been working yeah, on. Yeah, dude, no, seriously, I felt like I was a passenger in more ways than one. Yeah. Um, no, but seriously, these days, they should really, I mean, they should just do that. And then she was like, well, that's an idea. They should have it so where if you get a high score in the game, you get a lap dance. And I was well, like, with the tickets. <laughs> <laughs> the tickets of the little or like dog. or like models are like near you or whatever and then and then she was like oh but but then nerds you know it's funny because like nerds have like never touched a woman it's very nice of her to identify you as not a nerd and so i know i was honestly i was she, i was like pumping my fist a <laughs> yes. little bit oh um, gosh she started doing a nerd voice and she went oh but, but i've never touched a woman and then she goes Sorry, that was really offensive. Wow. And she like apologized. She realized you were a nerd. And then I said, no, that was interesting. <laughs> uh, funny. <laughs> Fascinating. You know when like someone tells a joke and you say that's interesting and it's the wrong thing to say because yeah. they were telling a joke? It's all you have for them. I almost said it and I like caught myself. That's so, that you said it. Yeah, didn't that's you? so funny. Oh. So funny. That was loud. But I do think that it's funny that nothing about what she said she thought would be offensive until she did a nerd voice. <laughs> she did. I'm one of the like most punching sideways kind of jokes. Yeah, where it's like, hey, oh me, I don't know women. <laughs> she I said, never touched one. She's doing a nerd voice from like the 70s. <laughs> did I do that? <laughs> oh, gosh. Boy, <laughs> 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 um, Okay, let me see what else I wrote down about that. Because I wrote down notes as this, I feel like the only thing I could do at that point was write down what was happening so that I could tell someone else about it. Um, uh, she said, I wonder if other Dave and Busters have pool tables. This is so, how long was this right? Like 20 minutes. This is um, a lot. And I said, I don't think this one has one. And she goes, oh, I know. I only go places with pool tables. <laughs> Did you go to this David? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Like AI. <laughs> I, I, like, my notes sound insane. DNB should have strippers. Uh, David Muster doesn't know what it wants to be. If there were strippers, no one would play the games. There's an idea. Bar with strippers and games. If you get a high score, you get a lap dance. And then did a nerd voice. <laughs> I felt awful. <laughs> regretted it. Oh, yeah, it. regretted it. A lot of it sounds like she's trying to, like, uh, it, like bring it up casually as a pitch for a restaurant she's actually trying to get funding for. Yeah. Like, by what the, if we had, like, some... We, maybe we started or something. Huh? I, I will say Great Driver 5 Stars, um, <laughs> you know, let me off right exactly where I needed to be let off. Knew, knew the tips and tricks around the area. Had some great feedback for David Buster. Had some great feedback. I mean, like, there was really no problem. It was just, like, a funny conversation. It is. I do think there is, like, a... Uh, there are very few scenarios where i'm i, I want to challenge some like a, like an uber driver on a statement or even somebody just in a chat uber whatever because it's not so much like if they say something like ideologically offensive there's been a handful of times where i've had to like push back because like I've, I've met some like like uh, two different times some big like jordan peterson guys that are citing like studies yeah. that are uh offensive and right. uh you know, a little off-putting. And it's not that I think, you know, I'm not making that classic lib mistake of, well, if they understood why racism is wrong, mm -hmm. then they would actually stop doing it. It's just, you know, it's a little bit indulgent on my part. But in most cases, um, just like you're describing there, yes ending. Yeah. Look, we're probably never gonna see each other again. Have I told the story about how uh, I had a non-black barber cutting my hair and then they just dropped, they like went on a long, <laughs> like, conversation about how the n-word should be okay yeah, to say so brave and then i have I'm like i have a razor to my head right now i this is not the moment that i can how to come up literally people just getting a people get offended over so it was like a matt rife situation oh yeah just and it's like a nothing come segue. on n-word it's just a word and every time i say n-word he's just saying he's like it's just a word he's got joe rogan playing in the background not a joke Clutch. um he's and, mouthing along to it as he says this. <laughs> yeah 
Uh, it was that was that was truly wild, and those are the moments where I felt the most cowardly. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm like, you know, you gotta survive. My survival instinct. I uh, think yeah, fatality risk is is, is, is can like kind of trump your yeah. uh, benefit. But then we talk about them on the podcast. Say his name <laughs> and his no. address. <laughs> Let's get him today. Um, we speaking of uh, health risks. <laughs> speaking of living that Matt life with Matt Rife. Matt Rife. Uh, we watched this whole special. We did watch this whole special because, because he's <laughs> he's on a tear. He's on a tear, <laughs> and I want to talk about that. But first, I want to pivot to something else because it's going to affect the rest of the show for us, um, which is the Panera situation. Oh yeah, because um, we 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 want to get charged for talking about the Matt life. This has been in the news before, but. Panera Bread, which is like the most like mid place to eat. I used to live on top of a Panera. Uh, no, when I interned in San Francisco, my apartment building had a Panera on the ground on the ground floor, like my apartment in Soma or whatever. Mm -hmm. That was like um, the the housing for the interns. They should make a Panera Bread just for adults. Mm. Instead of bread, there's like erotic dance. Yeah. And I should be there. <laughs> hey. I'm the king of Panera. Don't do that voice. Um, so uh, anyway, I used to eat a Panera a lot and I don't like it, <laughs> but it was like right there. And they've been. Mendocino a, beat Panera every single a, a time. A few months ago. Oh yeah, for sure. A few months ago, there was a story about they've got this charged lemonade I want to say we even watched one of the original TikToks Possibly. or maybe I just watched it. It, it. But it was it's this lemonade that's like caffeinated, but it's not clear that it's caffeinated. And so people on TikTok were learning that it's caffeinated after the fact. And there's a TikTok of this woman. I'm wondering, Jacob, is it the one on the left of, of like this woman, like finding out it's caffeinated like months ago and then like being like super wired. I Oh yeah. So this is so this is from December 2022, a year ago, and this went super duper viral, and we can just watch it. I have learned something that should be illegal, 100% should be illegal. So and it has to do with this drink. Let me give me a second. So I at Panera. Oh, I cannot get I cannot get myself straight. I work at Panera. No, I don't. I work I work in a Panera. I work in a Panera. When I'm doing my work because I don't want to pay for a co-working space, but working at home makes me want to dig my own grave because I'm alone and I don't have human interaction. So I work at my local Panera. Understand? And when I'm at my local Panera, they have free yes. refills. Free refills. This is the mango you do mango yuzu citrus charged lemonade. Woo, this is gonna be a whirlwind. Okay? And it has caffeine. And I knew that. But when I'm sitting there, I'll drink four or five of these. Oh God, Jesus I'm, Christ. Like, Man, when I work at Panera, I feel great. I feel awesome. <laughs> I feel, done. Well, feel charged. Well, so my husband is a type 1 diabetic. So we were going through the drive-thru because I wanted one. And he was like, oh, I want some. And so he went to look up the nutritional facts uh, about the drink so that he could have some and then adjust his blood sugar, right? Mm -hmm. This, the regular size, the regular size has 82 Grams of sugar, milligrams of sugar, grams of sugar. Who, whatever, let's push that aside. <laughs> she has 260 milligrams of caffeine. That's crazy. And it's also, <laughs> you know, makes, they like remind me of Liza Koshy in 2014. Yeah, yeah, dude. For one shot of espresso. I don't drink coffee. I don't have caffeine very much. I thought. <laughs> I, 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 drink, I, sometimes. I love I working at Panera and then every, every day I wake up with a Jacob? huge My headache. Dad, uh, yeah, so shout outs, by the way, just to like sometimes people are like, hey, what is the experience of being depressed? How do I know what it's like to get in the mind of someone else? If you want to feel hypomania, I think this covers it. Uh, she's speaking exactly like I would when I'm manic. Wait, can you? I want to shout out this creator because, first of all, she's hilarious, she's but funny. also, this was the first time I heard about the Panera stuff a year, a year ago, too. Then. Yeah, um, I'm willing to bet, by the way, that there's some. Sarah, 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 Sarah Haybaus. Shout out to Sarah Haybaus. S a r a h e b a u s. 
Yeah, shout out to them. I, I, I am willing to bet there's some comments that are like, well, what did you think? It says charge. Well, that's okay. This is actually like, this is actually a part of the issue. So in the in the year since, there have been two fatalities yeah. as a result of um drinking the charged lemonade. And seemingly from people that maybe like should not have consumed that much caffeine, but did not know how much caffeine they were consuming. Um, it charged lemonade. Oh, we have this down here. Charged lemonade is not Come labeled Lord. as an energy drink and it's served alongside other caf- non-caffeinated drinks, which is one of the, the big issues here. The large size, 390 milligrams of caffeine, which is almost the max amount recommended by the, uh, by the FDA. Um, now, people who drink a lot of coffee could be hitting this number, but I think the issue is the lack of communication mm-hmm. that people don't know what they're putting into their bodies and there could be risks and side effects to that. And you know what you're looking for. It's a, it's a little like alcohol. It's like, I know I'm drinking alcohol, but I also know what to expect from my body. And I know when it's telling me that I've had too much or that right. I'm going too fast. Same with caffeine. So, you know, two shot espresso for me, comfortable latte for the day. Could have a little more later in the day, but I have that extra two shots and yeah. I know it's too much. I'm shaky. Oh, for sure. If I yeah. didn't know that I was having that much, ca- if I was just like, hey, here's like a coffee. There's like some caffeine in it. I guess we'll figure out whatever. And then I... Or, you know, worse yet, I didn't know there was any caffeine in it, you know, for whatever reason, I got told it was decaf. I don't think I'd be as aware of when I started getting shaky. I'd be like, do I have low blood sugar? What's going on with me right now? When uh, when I was trying, when I was trying to figure out which ADHD medication would work the best for me, I was taking Adderall. And one of the side effects of Adderall for me and for a lot of people is like a lot of sensitivity to caffeine. Mm-hmm. And I was at an airport and I probably told the story before, but I was in an airport and there are two popular brands of root beer. One of them has caffeine, the other doesn't. Uh, Barks and A&W. One of them has caffeine. <laughs> I cannot currently tell you which one has caffeine, which it one doesn't. It might have changed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and I got a root beer because I was like craving a root beer and I was not thinking about the caffeine content. However, I started to feel like I was in the movie Crank and my heart was like beating yeah. out of my chest. And this was just a sign that Adderall was not for me. You know, it was like the side effects were a little too great. I think if I had any caffeine, I was like hypersensitive to it. But. Yeah, because my caffeine tolerance went down, but I still can. Yeah. And that's like me with Vivans. It's, it's like my caffeine tolerance goes down, but I still can. The ADHD is just luck. Yeah. And so that is my experience with like not knowing that I was consuming caffeine and then having side effects and i was just drinking a little bit like there's not that much caffeine in soda in the soda so which is another reason i think this is so remarkable it's like even if you see it's charged like yeah whatever i know i drink maybe a little too much diet coke i'm a little bit of a i'm a cokehead you could say i know there's caffeine in diet coke but Mm -hmm. i don't drink it with the explicit the explicit goal of getting energy because the caffeine quantity in the one bottle or one can that I have is just, it's not like, yeah, not really a game changer for me. I, if I could buy Diet Coke in that quantity, and by the way, for some of our uh, 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 folks not looking at the video, uh, be it uh, by choice or they, or they can't, it's huge. This is an American soda. It's yeah. like old school fist Also, size. free refills is wild because yeah, for the, the majority of the last year, they've just been sitting out at the, you know, you go to um, a cafe or something, they've got like a water dispenser um, and, and, or there's like fountain drinks at like a McDonald's or something like that or at a fast food place where it's just out. There were like carafes of this just out yeah but dude that i mean we we have it here it's the large size of 390 milligrams of of caffeine right yeah then uh it's it's almost the max amount recommended by the fda yeah with free refills one free refill yeah you've eclipsed it (laughs) you're you're getting into some dangerous territory like you know some people drink a pot of coffee a day my technology teacher in seventh grade uh drink a pot of coffee a day 
uh, and you just drink it from the pot. He was a weird man. Good friend of ours, author friend of ours, former Sad Boys guest. Can you figure it out? It's Lauren. There was, uh, she make, she loves diner coffee. Like she likes that ah. experience. And so she will make that kind of pot, at least when we used to work together. And she's, yeah, she's working on that through the day in a way that I, I find inconceivable, but works perfectly for her. Yeah. I think maybe if she didn't know it had caffeine in it, that might've been a little bit of a shock. Um, and, and also she works at Panera. She doesn't work at Panera. She works in <laughs> at the, uh, inside the Panera. One of the, one of the critiques as well, it, that contributes to the fact that people don't know it's caffeinated. Like you said, some people are saying, oh, it's charged. So you should know charge doesn't yeah. always mean caffeinated. Uh, people have said like it could be charged with flavor shots and, you know, charged with other things. Um, I mean, I know, I know Red Bull is charged, but that amount of charge is would yeah. be surprising to me. Also, isn't there like, there are other, I feel like charge has been used in other products that maybe I, aren't caffeinated. Electrolyte, charge, yeah, yeah. glucose, boost. So anyway, um, one of the criticisms uh, additionally that contributes to not knowing it's caffeinated is that like energy drinks have like a chemically kind of at, like taste to them you know yeah um where you're like i'm you know what an energy drink tastes like it's like i can't tell you the flavor of red bull but Ca i like caffeine I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, i know that there's some caffeine in there i have to also it's like the the intensity of the smell yeah like i crack a i'll crack a red bull here and there if i'm really lagging and when i crack it i go like oh the unleaded <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is oh, unleaded energy dude. there goes the smell of my living room <laughs> yeah and so there have been some changes. Like I think I've been seeing a lot of um, disclaimers and things put out near the near the the drinks, which are very like haphazardly done and very inconsistent. And it's usually like some like black and white photocopied, like kind of easy to ignore thing that says warning. This is not if you're pregnant or like a child, don't drink this. Maybe not a solution implemented by Panera, but by like in the franchise or like very yeah. haphazardly introduced by Panera because Panera has responded after, you know, their people have died as a result of consuming this, which is, I guess, what it takes yeah. to take responsibility. God, I'm drinking four of those while you're working. Oh, poor thing. I would have independently gone to the hospital and been like, I need to see my GP because something is generally wrong with yeah. me. I'm just shaking a lot at the end of each day. Yeah. But I feel great when I'm working at the <laughs> I mean, honestly, if you didn't, if, if, if one of the main things that you get for like intake forms and reviews for mental health assessments is what you eat, what you drink, what right. your lifestyle is, what your exercise is, what your sleep routine, especially. And I got like, like one of the reasons I got a bipolar two diagnosis is because at the time I was not drinking much caffeine and I would describe like uh, symptoms that I did not know. I didn't even know that there was a second version of bipolar at the time. And I'd be like, well, it's not severe enough to be bipolar. So like, it's not that I think maybe I can have this much caffeine still, but I'm also getting this thing where like, you know, I'll just stay up for like two days at a time. I, th I guess it's just my lifestyle. It's my weird caffeine. And then, you know, I'll have one day where I'm like, we should start three bands today. <laughs> and like, it, it, you know, in retrospect feels very clear, but I feel like if I wrote on my intake form, like, yeah, I don't really drink caffeine. I have like a couple of lemonades here and there, but then, uh, you know, we did a little work at, uh, at uh, uh, I was gonna call it Cabela's, whatever this one, <laughs> Panera, uh, every day and then, um, I get extremely intense and excited and then I get home and I'm miserable every single day. It feels like an episode of House yeah. where they're like <laughs> trying to figure out what's wrong with this the patient. This can't be. In a statement to USA Today, Panera Bread denied any wrongdoing saying, and I guess they have to deny it because otherwise they could be liable for like yeah. damages, saying Panera expresses our deep sympathy for Mr. Brown. This is in reference to Dennis Brown, one of the victims. Uh, but that based on its investigation, the company believes his unfortunate passing was not caused by one of the company's products. I mean, caused by like, it's like a negligence thing, right? Like it's like a, un, like probably unaware. I don't know how you would. It's not like th this is poison. It's just like. And also it's not the first death. This was the second one, no? Yeah. This is the second fatality from this. So oh no. The drinks are also included in Panera's lineup of eligible items for their unlimited sip club. That's fucking horrible. I mean, that's just not even. I, I look. I I don't even. 
let's say there were no, no neither of these uh, these deaths occurred, right? Let's just say that there's some scenario prior to both of those. That's just professionally irresponsible. It's negligent. It's just I, yeah. Don't give people infinite access to a shit ton of caffeine with yeah. I don't even know. I d- guess do you like get the the uh, ingredient information without going online and looking it up. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, it doesn't say it on the. It doesn't say it whatever, right? on the carafe. Uh, but yeah, there's a membership that allows patrons to pay a subscription fee for refills at, at no cost. And the thing is, it reminds me of the four loco problem because mm. the issue isn't that like the issue is that caffeine combined with alcohol for four loco makes you think that you're more lucid than you are. And it represses some of the symptoms of like drunkenness. So then you can over drink. Mm-hmm. So if it's like a carafe of coffee, you start to, your mouth starts to feel weird. You're like, oh, I know that I'm drinking straight caffeine when I'm drinking coffee. So it's I, acidic. You're getting hit with that. Yeah. And like, so oh I know not to just keep pounding it unless that's my goal. Um, and the same goes for these energy drinks, whereas this lemonade just tastes like a refreshing lemonade, allegedly. And so, of course, that would be, that's something where it's, it's a little bit more hidden. It's a little bit harder to keep track of your consumption. I just think that they should have like much more warning labels on this or just reduce just, the caffeine. Why is it that much? I, but the, the thought is that it makes people have a positive association with Panera and that makes them more return customers. Yeah. If you don't go to Panera, you get a headache. Yeah, exactly. So with all that being said, we have the mango yuzu. We have this thing. And they advertise the fucking join with my Panera oh, wow. unlimited sip club. Which we got today, by the way. <laughs> After all of this news, it does still. All the sips. That's crazy, oh. dude. Wait, they advertise. Drink it fast. There's the, no time. They advertise the sip club and all the sip. Drink as much as you want. A link straight to the, the USP. Guzzle it down. Gallons can be yours. <laughs> Keep drinking it or something wrong will happen. Um, Maybe you'll get fired for being too bad at work. It's strangely... Hmm. It feels like on one hand, I, I get the criticism that says like, it's just a caffeinated beverage. What's the big deal? I understand where those people are coming from, but never have I seen all the sips. Like, it's, keep drinking, thirsty. I mean, it's so deliberate. I mean, it just seems crazy to me. Here, I'll give Is you it, this one. This one's, uh, I'll pull up the flavors. We actually went to Panera. So it's now behind the counter. It's not, I don't know. If, I know at some places it was out. And at some places I've seen uh, photos with like chains on it and shit. Huh? Um, I don't know why that was. Um, so that's the blood orange yeah. and this is the mango y- yuzu citrus, but it's behind the counter now and it says contains. Oh yeah. That's the one. Oh, those are just chains around the, they're just oh, the okay, okay. things, but I don't like that. That seems. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, those are the kind of chains you see on a ghost. It should be labeled as an energy drink. I don't know if I ever saw a gallon of Red Bull that would feel like a bad idea. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just a, I, a cup Maybe of I'm, this size. Or if you went to a restaurant, they were like, free refill club for Prime. Yeah. Infinite Prime. Yeah, you get a backpack and you can just slurp it like one of those water backpacks. <laughs> yeah, like a, a camel backpack. A camel back, or yeah. Um, just so, filled to the brim with Red Bull. So it says, contains caffeine, consume in moderation. Okay. That's it. A little bit in contrast with the uh, the unlimited sip club. Drink in unlimited moderation. All the sips is very opposite oh, of of drink in moderation. That's almost like a a joke. Like yeah. it's like a, that's an Arrested Development joke, right? Yeah. There. It's like uh, we told them they have to drink in moderation. They did not say they had to drink in moderation. Yeah. All the sips. All the sips is crazy. I'm sorry. It's just a, it's also not great. So. All right. <laughs> I've already had caffeine today, so I am, um, this is not wise. I'm not going to drink this whole I'm fucking thing. consuming in moderation. But one thing I'm looking out for is whether or not it tastes like it's caffeinated. You want to do, do the same time? Yeah, let's do it. Jarvis Mango Jordan Blood. Here, cheers. Ow. It's very sweet. I would never in a million years guess that I had caffeine. 
because I'm distracted by all the sugar that's in it. Yeah, no, that that tastes like a like a uh, a, a juice bar like hotel breakfast. Yeah. Bag. Oh yeah. Like, I just need some OJ. Whatever. Uh. Yeah, it kind of does. Okay, you can go to like um, uh, Target or whatever and get one of those like one gallon jugs of juice for the family you know just like pour it out yeah. like concentrate yeah that tastes exactly like you that. could cut this with half water and it would probably still be something that you could <laughs> it's watery as fuck dude I'm, yeah. i am drinking this and being like this is i can see sipping away on this because it does not stay in your palate no no i mean this is refreshing like you could pound this easy which is not an endorsement of this drink, by the way. Oh, they do have now. It does look like these new labels have the caffeine on them. Okay, that's good. Um, I it's wonder, very tiny. I mean, maybe they should cover up <laughs> some of the sips. Or just, what about just sip? Yeah, how much does it cost to not use the... Well, they're like, we make so much money on the Unlimited Sip Club. Yeah, that's true. Just take the, take this out of the Unlimited Sip Club, maybe. How about just the Sip Club? How about just sip club? Also, why are we? I I don't know. I don't know. I'll a be monthly, honest with you. A monthly subscription to get unlimited refills. I there's something off about that to me. I'm not a huge uh, ju a, a, a juice juice man. Yeah, but OJ the juice man. I mean, I that's the only OJ I really connect with the most. <laughs> you know what I mean? I love Naked Gun. Oh, did something happen? Yeah. Anyway, I was in a coma for 30 years. I don't really like the way this tastes. Let me try it's, your. You should try mine. Yeah, yeah try you yours. try yours. It's um, mine tastes good. I mean, like it's like they. Sh I do not think the taste would be affected if they just fucking took the caffeine out. Oh, this tastes even less like caffeine. No, oh, this just tastes like oh, soda. No, no yeah. yours is fucking water, dude. Yeah. This. Okay. Oh no 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 no. That is crazy. Yeah. No, this just ta this tastes like a kid soda, like a, yeah. like a juice juice. No, this is this is a juice. This is like it that's a juice box juice. That this tastes like um, the wow. sweetness I would compare to Hawaiian Punch. Yeah. You know the uh the guy with the red hair on the in the big jugs with the blue label. Mm. That Hawaiian Punch. That's the level of sweetness we're talking about. This actually is very watery. That feels kind of like the experience you have like a Long Island iced tea where it's just designed to get as much alcohol into the sweetest possible thing. Yeah. It tastes like that. Or, or like a teenage house party drink where it's like, well, what do we have? I don't know, just like uh, we have a shit ton of uh, cranberry juice and bitters. These are, <laughs> these are completely different flavor profiles. Yeah. This tastes like a a water that is flavored yeah. like it tastes like it should be like 40 calories for the whole thing like a vitamin water so the fact that it is like 300 calories for the whole thing and then fucking four cups of coffee worth of caffeine is crazy jacob how much is a, a regulation sized red bull caffeine wise it's, like uh, I just it up. it's 110 110 <laughs> that's so much less. That's yeah insane. That's crazy. A yeah. hundred and ten. What's, That's a, what's an espresso? An average espresso shot? Like a hundred. I think. Eighty to a hundred? That would be my guess. Sixty-four for one shot. Okay. So a double oh, shot oh, yeah, would be maybe, like yeah, 120. For yeah. For like a latte or something. That's how many did you say she had? Four. Four? I think. That's yeah, I think it was that. That's like that? a dozen cups of coffee. Dude, it's that's like crazy. so crazy, dude. <laughs> Why is there that much caffeine in this? <laughs> she, every day <laughs> she was doing <laughs> this. That's insane. That's wild. I oh mean, my that, god. I mean, that I th I think that's probably the defensibility argument they're using. Right? Is like, well, there's look plenty of people aren't. Aren't, aren't dying from it and it's like yeah. well yeah sure of course if right. most people were you definitely have stopped doing it but like do you remember the story I, I, I don't really want to go into it too much because it is just like a very sad story but there was um uh an older woman that went through a McDonald's got a McDonald's coffee uh spilled it while driving and it was like scolding her yeah the f extremely annoying response to that or like very ob obnoxious response independent of what McDonald's said about it, was so many people online being like, it's coffee. 
hey, you know it's supposed to be hot. I'm like, right, yeah. But here's the thing is, you know cars aren't supposed to crash. <laughs> so what, but we do put the seat belts in, don't we? Yeah. Not because it means it's fine to crash or, and we don't put the seatbelt in. People go like, oh, I guess I can crash my car now. Also, you're not supposed to make coffee at scalding, yeah. scalding hot scalding hot. You don't even have to. It's what it is. Yeah, it's like 160 degrees Fahrenheit, 180 it's degrees Fahrenheit. crazy that- But like to be at boiling point or like past that is, is, is un- it's bad for the coffee and it's bad and it's bad for the safety. It should not be able to happen. Anyway, yeah, it, I mean, it's, the truth is, is that monolith companies like this do this kind of shit because it ultimately doesn't matter. I mean, what's going to happen to Panera even if they keep doing this? I'm so scared to like accidentally like casually sip on this and putting it away. It's, um, you know what it is? It's not like so tasty that I'm like uh, uh, just sipping on it. Like, mm, yum, 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 yum. But if I was working at a Panera doing my, on my little laptop, typing away, Type in emailing your dog to what's oh, wrong yeah, with this Oh, yeah, you just passively consume it. I could put it, to, I, it with a, my focus elsewhere. Yeah. Not talking about it. Which is what happens even, when you're like working there. I fucking, yeah. I'm not, I used to have the- If you're in the Unlimited Sip Club, dude, you're si- you're, you're <laughs> camping out at the fucking Panera. We're get a, your money's worth. We're a couple of Phil's animals, dude. Yeah. One of the reasons I tend not to work in Phil's cafes is because I'll drink like a few. If I work for like a couple hours- I like sipping and it's iced. So I'm like, oh, you know, this is fine. It's water, yeah. you know, whatever. And it's like a conscious decision because I'm focused on what I'm doing and I know that I can just casually consume. It's like if I get popcorn at the theater, I get the small one because yeah. I will just eat the large one and I'll feel sick. That's the thing where it's like I try to control the, you know, it's like, oh, you should have discipline. Oh, you should have a self-control, but you also control the environment to not like if you put a giant bag of candy next to your bed and your office and everywhere you are, you would definitely eat more candy on average. Why does it have to be only willpower? Yeah. Why do you have to like get the flu and you just have to be tough enough to deal with it? We have a limited amount of attention and willpower and stuff. So you tend to want to have an environment. I can take it. Uh, You tend to want to have an environment that does not, cause you to constantly work to avoid things God damn and shit. avoid cravings that's, or whatever that's <laughs> you, you know what's weird is if this was just a story about like eh, they have this tasty drink with infinite refills and it's got the same amount of caffeine as a red bull or something it's so much more and infinite refills and yeah. at a place you wouldn't necessarily expect the caffeine. you drink a red bull like five sips into this fucking thing yeah, like yeah. a full caffeine's worth of uh, all all of Red Bull's caffeine in a few sips. If and I then, drink a Red Bull, I treat it the same way as Adderall. I go yeah. like, all right, let's take a second, see see what's gonna happen next. I, yeah, it. when I'm drinking coffee, I like pace myself, be, and I don't like if I'm starting to feel it too much, I stop drinking the coffee. Oh, damn, dude. And uh, yeah, and anyone making the argument of like, oh, it's charged is like, okay, but this is happening to people, isn't it? Yeah. So you could you could make that claim if you want, but I don't know. It's a very libertarian way of approaching the world. Just like, oh, you know, let the market decide. <laughs> like, okay, I'm gonna no, survival of the fittest. I'm gonna land on people not dying. It's natural selection. Natural selection. Oh boy, don't remind me. Speaking of natural selection. Speaking of mid, uh, mid comedy. We watched Matt Rife's special because he's in the news again, and I wanted to watch his special <laughs> to get the full, the full Rife. You know. Well, who knows? You know, maybe the kind of crappy clips of his hackier, cliched bits were. Over exaggerated. Maybe that's just the lowest common denominator. And it's stuff like I watched can. some of it before, but I didn't watch the whole thing. And it turns out it is all it just is that kind of actually, actually worse than I thought it was going to be. It's actually kind of it's it's not even fun to laugh at because what's bad about it is it's basically a middling to slightly below average just Netflix hour. Like that's yeah. They make a lot of them and the point is is that they're appealing and the jokes are about airplane food or whatever. But the number of times he starts off a pre we were laughing at how predictable the, the pre- There is a point there is a point where he is telling a joke and we're gonna talk about the Matt Rife uh isn't why Matt Rife is in the news. But there is a point in his special where he's telling a joke about being on an airplane. And we're like, okay, here we go. Jesus. And then and then he 
uh, says that he was like sitting next to a kid and he like sets it up and he's like, and I was sitting next to, and we pause it and it's like me, Jordan and Anastasia and we're like, oh, uh oh, where's this going to go? And then he's like a kid, what's like the, a three year old. And we're the, like, oh. easiest bit yeah it, it, his statement was the two worst people to be sent yeah to. and so he was like sitting next to a three-year-old and we were like oh i thought he was gonna say an over like someone who was heavy like a heavy set person or a fat person and he gives it a little bit of breathing room to talk about this annoying kid and then he's like and the dad was 400 pounds didn't let us down didn't Good let stuff. us down the fat phobia went crazy in that thing He's randomly talking in a black scent like the whole time, which I found really interesting because it's not like uh, he talks like that in any interviews or anything like that. It's his onstage cadence. It's like an impression of like a, a deaf comedy jam performance. Yeah. Even and like how kinetic he is on stage as well. It's just it's it's he's emulating like a very specific type of comedy that's very 90s, early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. even like he's like a slightly less manic version of Dan Cook with weaker premises. He I don't know. There is this uh, I've been trying to figure out what frustrates me so much about it. And <laughs> I think it's very boring and annoying when people get caught up in cancel culture and the whole last third of the special is just him basically doing that drill tweet of I'm not owned. He does talk about, you will talk about the last third of it. He talks about late trolls online. He talks it's about just trolls. So, it's so hack. It's so overdone. Ugh, these but, trolls, they have no life and they're so mad at me. But, you know, I don't watch most Netflix hours because that's kind of the game. I get it. I'm not the audience for a lot of those specials. You know, whatever. There, ah, you know, as, as we know from his statements on, on Talon Mojo's podcast, um, haters will become your waiters. Uh, <laughs> the only reason that anybody dislikes him uh, or hates on him is because we, we are we are jealous, jealous of him. Yeah. We're jealous of him succeeding in a career that we've never aspired to do or, <laughs> or work towards. But hey, we're jealous and yeah, that's we, what matters. We're actually very jealous. Uh, we're molding about it. But I, there's something... Um, frustrating to me however valid or invalid it might be about someone who is um what was it uh, trading in authenticity that kind of being a portion of the game mm -hmm. and so much of his crowd work stuff which he seems to resent that being what mm -hmm. he is known for which is i okay i mean you post it dog relax I think he is generally stronger at crowd work stuff. He absolutely is. Because he's a charismatic guy that's pretty quick on his feet and engaging with an audience means that like, you know, audiences very rarely go, yeah, what's the deal with airplane food? You're not, you're not gonna get a hacky premise. The problem is, is he's so clearly, he's, he's not pulling, not to speak on his life, but the way, the anecdotes he tells feel like there's no life worth commenting on. And yeah, all of his anecdotes and all of his setups, all of them, and I mean every single one, <laughs> is in the top twenty most overdone shit. It's weird. It's like it's like a set so strangely predictable that at any point you could think about what the lowest common denominator joke is for every situation, including the situations themselves. Um, and it, it's like he hits the mark every single time. And there's no connective tissue, which, which plays even more into yeah. the point of like, okay, well, I'm done with that overdone Yeah, bit. which is like an old, which is old school, right? Like that's how like a lot of the old stand-up hours are. It's which, like if you- Which listen, I think is his, that's- Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, this weird like disparate tone between wanting to be like, hey, I'm online, I'm a little different and maybe I'll do a little crowd work, but also I got some crazy ideas and this fame's going crazy. And then his stand-up bit being, it's more out of date than most like 40, 50 year old comedy podcast guys. Yeah. It, they have him on his show. In and a he's weird like, way. It's clearly like a super fan. And he's like, he's the women, huh? What's going on with these guys? The what, do, They drive like this and I drive like that. To his credit, he has all of the qualities that you need to be a successful stand-up oh, comedian. Yeah. Um, but his like stat loadout is like, he's like um, like a 99 on everything except for premises and joke writing. Yeah, yeah. And that, his, his whiz is very low. Wisdom and yeah. uh, dexterity is very low. He's not jumping around with new, new ideas. It's so weird because um, 
he he even kind of prophesizes something that just happened, which is what we'll talk about. So um, Matt oh, yeah. is in the news now because he uh, <laughs> he like left a comment. Like a, a six-year-old kid who happens to be the child of this influencer, Bunny Hidea, um, made a stitch to a Netflix, to a Netflix um, TikTok. So it wasn't like Matt Rife's TikTok. Mm. It was like the Netflix is a joke account or whatever, or the at Netflix. That's right. With a clip of a that A clip special. of his stand-up. And it's, um, Matt Rife is doing his like transformative groundbreaking material about how uh women are into astrology and that's like, wacky and weird and crystals <laughs> and like honestly dude what people don't understand is that guys watch porn yeah and what is the joke it's like Ju just just because jupiter has a ring or jupiter doesn't have a ring what does uh, he say just because jupiter has rings doesn't mean that you that you isn't why you don't is isn't why you should because like marriage or whatever yeah. Which is you're uh, mad because Jupiter has a ring and you don't. Oh right, you're yes. Mad, it's, oh, you're yeah. mad because Jupiter has a ring and you don't. Nice. And um, and then this child was like, it's you, you know Uranus that has rings or something like that. Or, uh, no, it's, uh, it's Saturn. Saturn, right? Saturn that has the ring. Which to be when we say child, emphasis on child. They are six years old. Six years old. Which honestly, shout outs to like <laughs> zigging someone so well at six. And I I'm going. The, okay everything on the internet has told me and every like source that's connected to this has told me that this is a real thing that he commented Hell so yeah. i am going with the uh understanding that this is a real thing that he commented if it comes out somehow some way that this is not real then we at least set, said this but uh what he has done in the past is uh he tweeted he made fun of mason ramsey the like mm. yodeling kid um and so we'll show that also. But um, so he has made fun of children before on the internet. But and, and has kind of a prolific history of, he's actually like, for someone that thri thrives usually in crowd work, he's very bad off the dome when it comes to social media. But he does uh, brag about his clapback game in his standup. Oh, the boy, last does third he? of it is about how he, like people gang up on him online and he's like, if you're gonna go for me, then I'm gonna go for the jugular. But I'm not upset about it. I'm oh. actually laughing. Yeah, he's like, but it doesn't get to me. My therapist shit. though says that I'm reactive to oh, and whatever. defensive. I guess. Uh, but it doesn't it doesn't bother me. I'm actually even thinking about that idea is so funny to me. I'm not i I'm actually I'm crying about something else. Nothing to do with the stars, man. Just because Jupiter has a ring and you don't doesn't mean really? It's Saturn that has rings, and it has more also, and you're mean to girls. First of all, pound. Yeah. <laughs> Body, dude. It's like Devastating. Such Bearing in mind that this guy is genuinely, like, visibly upset when some people online are like, hey, you should, like, maybe not be cruel to flight attendants. <laughs> Boy, oh boy, is he uh, not receptive to zingers from a six-year-old. Zingers uh, from someone that's like just starting spelling bees. Um, okay, so anyway, so that's the TikTok. And it's just a kid in a onesie tr being a cute kid in a onesie, whatever. So now, what if he's wrong? My instinct, obviously, is, you know... I have to destroy this child with facts and logic. Uh, maybe that's inspired by his stand-up special where he says he gets defensive and he has to go for the kill. I have a very quick trigger reaction to feel the need to defend myself if I feel like somebody's coming at me, right? And, and I go for the kill every time. Yeah, but he's actually, Jarvis, what you don't understand is these trolls online, these trolls, they're, they're ganging up on him. Including mm -hmm. children. And they're, I mean, he, <laughs> correcting something and then saying he's mean to women, which he is. Um, <laughs> which is, you know, I'm not, we're not policing like the politics of a stand up. That, I'm just not even particularly interested in his ideology. But it is like, yeah, man, that's the, you are, you are being mean to women. That's what the bit is. What yeah. is the, 
God, this fucking zinger from my wife sucks. All right. So he says, Jupiter also has ring. First of all, the, the okay, the spelling mistakes in this are so funny because it feels like he just like, he was in a hot rage. Sweat and, and tears in his eyes. Just pop, like had to rip it out, you know? I'm not crying. So look, you can talk your shit to me online as much as you want, but just know. I'm going to fuck you up verbally. <laughs> um, Jupiter also has ring. Oh! And Santa Claus isn't <laughs> real. No, is Santa Claus not real? Your mom buys you presents with the money she makes on OnlyFans. Good luck, wacky like face. Yeah, dude, I'm not, I do not discriminate against women. By the way, it is bad to have OnlyFans. It's <laughs> like what he's it's saying. It's like weird. And, and, and this is a person that does not have OnlyFans and is like a large content creator in their own right. And so yeah, it's just inaccurate. It's just wrong. So it's like, it's just wrong. So if you, um, if you're going to, if your own of the six year old <laughs> is that his facts are wrong, then you cannot in turn respond with an incorrect statement. Two. Two back to back. Yeah. Because I get like uh, the thing is not to be. Uh, and Santa Claus is real. Santa Claus is not Santa, real. Santa, Santa Claus, Santa Claus is, is real. real. Right, right, right. I, not to be a pedant about it, but like technically, no planet has rings. That's like it's it's a phenomena of like observation, right? Mm. Like we we in the way that we capture images of planets there are like phenomena that look a certain way that I, anyway it's not important matt rife's closer in his special is like 15 minutes of him justifying why he why he sent a, a woman a fat phobic comment yeah it's like kind of crazy how much he tries to justify it um but the whole thing being like he the whole thing starts with him being upset that his bag doesn't fit um, in the overhead bin or in front of him, which is his own doing. It's <laughs> his, his fault. Dude. And so he puts Can you it, imagine that? Planes, man. It's crazy. And then he puts it behind his legs and then a flight attendant says, you can't do that. No one can. No one That's, can. It's a plane. The, the, there are rules <laughs> on this plane. And, uh, and then he took to Twitter. This is in the special. He took to Twitter to complain about the rule. And he also, I don't believe that in real life he was rude to the flight attendant, but no. he presents as if he was rude to the flight attendant. And then he takes to Twitter and you know he took to Twitter because he felt like he was in the right. Yeah, of course. It, it, and he, he goes and complains about this rule and then no one agrees with him because he himself is Karen posting. Which, his, and then his uh, uh, conclusion at the end is, well, Actually, it's because everyone is so mean online. Whereas in the scenario where everyone agreed with him, it's like, oh, I was based actually. The There's no scenario where he's wrong. The people disagreeing with me have nothing going on in their lives. Grow That's up. like literally the thing he said in his special and on that Tana Mojo podcast. They're actually jealous of me and haters will become my waiters. Um, and also, uh, without going into it, that Tana Mojo podcast has publicly said fuck Matt Rife recently, which, yeah. is, which is wild. Um, so... He is speed running, uh, becoming public enemy number one in the content zone. It's it is a little sad, um, only in the sense that like he was kind of a, f you know, it's, it's like a straight white dude in comedy. It's not the the, the freshest thing, but he was like uh, tonally kind of fresh. He's a relatively mm -hmm. young guy in a more traditional stand up space doing well and having exploded off of TikTok. Those are all interesting things. Right. And to see the journey kind of end in such a uninteresting way. Not not the journey of his career, but like the development of his work and to see him so unreceptive to feedback in an industry where it's like laughter is feedback, man. Like that's that's he, what you are here he for. He Dave Chappelle too soon. Yeah. Like it's like you you do that after you've built a generational career. You have to be a multi multi millionaire, and then you're then you lose touch, and at least we can go like all right, course, right? Course. Like <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. Like he 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 like lost touch as if he is a sixty year old comedian <laughs> yeah. who has only been famous his entire life at this point. Who's been famous for the last thirty years? I mean, I talked about in the past how like 
Ricky Gervais's first two specials, as and they there's still you know fucked up elements in them now in retrospect, but they dropped in the uh, mid two thousands. Tr- like transformative for me, like really important. There's still little cadences and voices and jokes I'll do that are like very clearly Gervais and Stephen Merchant influenced. Stephen Merchant still still pog champ. Thumbs up. Good stuff. Very long and also from uh, Middle England. So shout out. Sounds even more like a pirate than I do. <laughs> he, uh, Gervais's first two specials, genuinely excellent. The second one in particular is like him becoming, being like quite self-conscious about his growth and his platform and like stuff like that. And he's treating it with like no reverence at all. He's like, it's like, it's, hey, it's nice having money or whatever, but you know, hey, what the hell is this? This is so stupid. Other celebrities, like, why do we have any pride? This is bullshit. And then the moment I fell off of it, I think the third one is fine. I don't remember it particularly well. The fourth special, which I think is the first Netflix special, is the one where it completely disconnected from it. And it is within the first 10 minutes, he talks about trolls on Twitter. Mm. And he starts reading his own tweets. Oh. And reading people. I mean, that's kind of what Matt Reif does in his special. It is. It is so. It is such a bummer to see someone, especially as, I don't know, like, I feel like if you grow up online, you just, especially active content creation online, grow a spine, dude. (laughs) You have to have a little bit of tolerance for that. What the hell are you going to. How are you in a career about people liking and, like, Success is people laugh and they connect with what you're doing. Failures, they don't laugh and they aren't connecting with it. Yeah. You are like, like being a stand up comedian is a crucible. It's like co- that constantly happening. You cannot be this soy in this career. It's a weird, like, conditioned but can't take it situation. Why Why did you choose this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do this career. The thing is, like, there are people who are made fun of for no reason. You know what sure, I mean? Yeah. Like Justin Bieber when he was a 13 year old boy or like Britney Spears. Well, the reason is outside of them. It yes, is. it's a society's problem. Especially with music, it's usually girls listen to this and that's bad. Exactly, yeah. Um, but the but Matt Reif is like not one of those people. Like when he's being made fun of, there is a criti- there is a core criticism at the root of it and he seems to be unable to reckon with that being a real valid critique. That's annoying to him in a way that like, it's never fun receiving feedback. It's never yeah. pleasant. It's it, it's about, it, it's, a, it's okay if your adrenaline to go up when you get it, but if yeah. it's good faith criticism, or even if it's not constructive criticism, but mm-hmm. it is a like, overwhelming consensus that the people don't like what you're doing. Yeah. There is something valuable to be taken from both. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is also healthy to evaluate how bad faith the criticism is and say, well, actually this is an invalid person. This is clearly act actually a hate watcher. Like Mm -hmm. this is, this is like a a, a drama alert viewer that just like hates this person because they, you know, whatever. But Seriously, it's not always the case. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, pretty often it is somebody with like, you don't have to agree with them, but you need to, yeah, you should not be replying to the six-year-old at all, but you certainly shouldn't be doing it so fast that you misspell Santa Claus. It's, yeah, it's a thing where he, self-reports in his stand-up about his tendency yeah. to do this. So it's funny seeing it like play out in real time. Um, and also, uh, it's similar to what happened with the, the first response that he did. Yeah. Um, uh, the, can we pull up the Mason Ramsey one as well? Cause this is another funny, funny one. So this one, this one dates back, this one dates back to, uh, 2018. So is that how old this is? Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't realize it. So this is coming up on, well, let's say it's three and a half. Wait, hold on. Sorry. Five and a half years ago. Jesus. Four and a half years ago. There we go. I'm so young. So. Um, and oh my God, it's five and a half years. I'm, I My brain kept farting. Sorry. Five and a half years ago. So Matt Reif was only 23-ish. Going to give him, he was young. Yeah. And Mason Ramsey was uh, an adult. <laughs> he was he was a child. I don't know what it is with him beefing with children. But I mean, Ma- he seems to keep thinking he can take them on and then losing. <laughs> Mason Ramsey tweeted, who's like the yodeling kid, right? 
like he tweeted with Post Malone, congratulations, probably a re- reference to both the Post Malone song and then maybe Post Malone winning. It looks like it's at an award show. I'm not even sure. Probably for Beer Bongs Bentleys, as it should have been. Um, and then Matt Reif quote tweeted this unprovoked, which is so funny because he makes this whole thing about defending himself. But like this one's <laughs> fucking unprovoked. This is why even at all. Uh, he also misspells forehead. <laughs> What's going on, man? Uh, he says, fucks on your forehead, question mark. Some gum. I also love to, always love to see someone kind of AAVing up their, tw- their tweets. You oh, know, my brother. That, that makes he, it cool. His fucking entire special is in a black sense. It's really weird. It's weird. He talks more. He talks like fucking. He talks about black people in his special more than black people. Oh, yeah. Black stand ups do. He it's says, crazy. It, it is a. Again, it's another thing that reads like, oh, you're just. You're uh, you're Kakashi. You're the copy ninja. Yeah. There is nothing original happening here. You're just like an. It's like alchemy. It's weird. Like I get the people who's like, oh, why are you making it a race thing? It's just like specifically watch that stand up and look at how many times black people are brought up for no reason. It's quite strange. There's a joke that he has that's about him being like about a ghost coming out of his closet and making and saying it was scary in two ways because gay people are scary is the joke. And then also it's a ghost. But then uh, who's the ghost that he uh, he gives the ghost an identity? The identity, Lil Nas X. The scariest Why? thing. Lil Nas know. X is alive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah like, um, and but then like, he, there's a thing, he mentions Rosa Parks. He mentions like 12 big black dudes when he's, uh, when he's talking about um, scaring off ghosts. There's a whole bit about ghosts and it monsters. Is, it is some like... It's just hacky. It literally it is just feels hacky. like if it weren't for the production value and the fact or the production value style and the fact that it's on Netflix, you could degrade this footage a little bit and just tell me it was from like 2008. Yeah, it's just weird. Like just the choices are odd. That's it, that's really all it is. Um, but it, anyway, it's most very insecure. I guess yeah. that's the last thing I'll say about all that is that it is just like a he never leaves any time at least in the edit, which they do have agency over, he never leaves any time for a build-up to a laugh. The setups always have to have faces and asides, and that can work if the premise is really strong and worth playing with. But instead, it's just like, some man walks into a bar. <laughs> and like, it's like, just do, bro, it's okay that people aren't laughing right now. So um, Mason Ramsey then responds, quote tweets it. Obviously, the tweet is unavailable because he deleted it because he because obvious reasons are about to unfold. He said, it's a birthmark. Not all of us are perfect. Zing, perfect. Bang ever. Yeah, dude. He, also, he's a child. Leave him alone. And then Matt Rice responds, the backtracking is fucking crazy, dude. You are perfect, bro. Was genuinely curious, LOL. I've got your new single on repeat, little man. Keep doing big things. I'm actually a really big fan. Um, <laughs> Dude, actually, you're amazing. Hey, Jarvis, nice face, you fucking idiot. And then you no, reply, but- just like, why would you say that? I'm actually a huge fan, man. I'm really sorry. I mean, I did. I responded like this when um, we talked about the guy who got bought the Power Ranger costume. Oh yeah. And yeah. then he he like listened to the show, and we're like, dude, you're a legend. But we were never making we fun were of him. It was yeah, a yeah, legend. we were we were like, and it's like I could understand how you could maybe see it that way, but but ultimately we were like, oh, this is just a wild thing that happened, and it is funny to see his initial reaction, but the fact that he's like an adult who's like leaning into his childhood things i have fucking pow- a power ranger toy right there like i'm right there with him so it's it's very sweet and yeah. there is a like there can be a middle ground between laughing at and laughing with where it is a like uh laughing through like whoa loma surprise like shock it's like wow i've not really watched anything like this guy doing this or like if the baba's guy who fucking choked on boba and didn't know what it was <laughs> yeah, dude. like if he saw the clip of us laughing at it uh we would still i, I would with a full conscience be able to say that he's a fucking legend yeah man. but he also posted the tiktok and he knew and he was a good sport about like the reaction which to rules it. but which, which rules but this he's clearly shitting on him and he um, really does hit him with the like, um, excuse me, fine sir, I do, I, I apologize. You actually win the internet today. Actually, I'm your biggest fan. Um, the, you are, okay, well, first of all, don't say you're perfect to a child. 
<laughs> Unless it's your child and they've got like low self-esteem or something. Don't say you are capital A-R-E. Yeah. You are perfect, bro. To a child you don't know. That you're also just make you man, it's so funny how he code switches too. Yeah. Like your fucks on your forehead, some gum. <laughs> and then he goes, he gets upset and, 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 and like sensitive. And he goes, um, you are perfect, bro. <laughs> Was just genuinely curious. Lol. I've got your new single on repeat, little man. Keep doing big things. All right. I would, I would safely say no replying to children. I would just say no uh making fun of children yeah no swing it out i feel like if a kid is like hey big fan you could be like hey big fan of you yeah i don't know but uh anyway so that's the the matt rife moment i can't believe we're talking about him again but it's like (laughs) become a weird fascination of mine that i hope isn't getting you know over the top i think people enjoy i mean we should it's a it's a very specific crossroads of our interest yeah and, and also i think shit that we have uh we feel like somewhat informed positions on because it is yeah but yeah people we had conflicts online not the same kind sure. of the same reason but there's you know seeing that dialogue with a lot of friends that have gone through similar dialogues and we have a lot of uh friends that do stand up and we have a lot of, it is and we go to a lot of live stand-up shows from professionals and from up-and-coming stand-ups. And we care about comedy. Sure. And I don't, I mean, it's, I've, I'm sure maybe maybe this doesn't read, maybe it does, I don't know. I am not, a bit, when it comes to like the offense of a comedy or the, like the offensiveness of a bit or something, I may align with it being like ah, I don't know if that was appropriate or I, 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 I could be pretty lax with it I'm like ah, whatever I'm, uh, let me just hear the bit first but it that I don't care about that whenever the the parts about like uh, he's making fun of domestic violence I'm like that is very common in stand up and I don't think he has to be the avatar of that conversation it mm-hmm. is a it's, a it's a valid criticism to make right. but that's not kind of specifically a problem that he's bringing in Mm -hmm. he's doing that because he is does not know where to go other than punching down (laughs) he doesn't understand that there are other ways to engage with and critique and self-critique crazy does the fucking like yeah my therapist says i'm pretty defensive we were i know for a second we were like wait yeah it was like wait introspective but then this she was heavy and it was literally all a justification for punching down which is like any he goes i know you're supposed to I know you're supposed to, uh, you know, take the high road, but when 700 people are ganging up on you, that's an internal narrative telling you that. 700 people are not ganging up on you. You (laughs) tweeted a bad take and people had a response, but that's like, that's like just, uh, if you want to leave the tweet up, then do it. If you want to delete it, then do that. But what you cannot do is start randomly shitting on people who disagree with you. Well, they hate him because he's good at comedy or whatever his reason was again. also even in the even in the canon of his stand-up the reason for fat shaming this woman was her saying that he's like an insufferable little bitch yeah a pretty like like well yeah i mean more than anything is a do you what is the this was the one that upset you is this is a person that just doesn't like you they're not even saying you know uh, Jupiter doesn't have rings or whatever. I'll just say I've been I've been I've been playing around with I've been trying to remove the B word from my vocab. I'm I'm giving a literal quote there, but I don't know. That may not matter to some people, but I feel the same way about saying crazy sure. as a word. Like I I'm very context aware and I'm not ever gonna say to a person you're being crazy or something <laughs> right, like that. Yeah. But I understand that people think that that should be removed entirely from language. And and for me, right now where i'm currently at i sometimes use it to describe situations i try to replace it with wild almost all the time mm. but i have i've said it but it's it's fine i mean i would not i'm not it's not for me to decide if it's fine for you but for for me and my developing perspective on this like i understand where it comes from but i do think that like context matters and i'm not overusing it it's like sometimes it comes out, I'm trying to avoid it. 
but I'm not beating myself up if it happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. And hey, I uh, we've talked about it before, but there's always an impulse. I think when there's a if some kind of public platform or there are people that could give feedback to want to uh, justify habits and, and behavior. Yeah. I. It is not a principle of mine. But I am oh, I'm going to continue calling things insane. <laughs> and I, partially because I am, and then <laughs> so that feels like some defensibility, but it, I, I'm going to continue saying it because I don't think it's objectively fine. It's not that I can give it a full thumbs up wholeheartedly. Yeah. It is at exactly the same level as me buying all my furniture on Amazon, Yeah, where I am, I, I do not ethically agree with what I'm doing. And I care a little less than that. Yeah, it, all, it does less. feel like as public figures, it's like I want to be responsible with my platform and my voice. But at the same time, uh, I'm working on so many things and I'm trying my best to TM. Uh, and January I, 6th sale, everybody, for the most. And I can only forget. stop. And I can only handle what I can handle. And I'm trying. I think as yeah. long as I'm trying... I know that I won't always be do the best for everyone or do what everyone expects of me, but I know that I, I'm doing what I can and uh, the consequences like will come, you know, as they, as they may. But um, on Chadvice, I got a lot of very kind comments and a lot of them were calling me eloquent, which is so crazy to me because, oh, crazy. There you go. Uh, That's insane. <laughs> which is so ridiculous to me because I almost never feel like I know what I'm saying or that I, the ADHD thing happens where I get in the middle of a sentence and I go, where am I? Where is this <laughs> going? And I was trying really hard in the moment to give people my best and be an active listener and try to provide the best advice that I could. And I'm really glad that it was um received well uh but it is one of those things where um someone says like i like your jacket it's like i hate it it's too small and it makes yeah. me look like a weird guy yeah that's really nice of you but you hate it too we both yeah. we both hate me actually as well <laughs> so it's, i'm trying to i try to shut down that sure. voice and uh thanks for all the kind words i've gotten um uh about that and you know not to butter your bread you know we're friends. I love you, and I would always, I, I would always try and be a, a sweet, kind boy. But I do think you are legitimately a very eloquent and measured person with your words. More, more measured than me, certainly. And I, I think that's one of the reasons that the podcast is so easy for me to do, because I, I feel as though structurally you're a much more sound. You're more articulate and, and consistent with the way you, you, you structure what you say. And it can be a little bit more flimsy, which I think in contrast and in dynamic works well. But I, when it comes to the ADHD hopping around or pausing stuff, I think that's a little like um, how the flash see, sees the world, <laughs> where we're, we're, we're getting lost in it and thinking and hopping around so quickly. I work at Panera. <laughs> and then I work in, I'm in the, I am Panera. Uh, I am bread. And then we listen back to the footage and we're like, oh, that was, that pace was fine. I Real there. quick. And it's one of the things where it's like, we've lived in our own bodies and, and talked to each other for many years. So it's easy to dig into the minutia when the average person is a casual listener who is just like, Oh, I'm just listening to the guys I like. Um, but one, I want to say thank you for that. And two, I want to say, I have always thought that you were extremely eloquent and well-spoken and also very funny, uh, handsome six three, by the way. Um, no big deal. Yeah, yeah. So, those those are things that I think it goes both ways, and it's mutual. I think that yeah. I mean, that's what makes the podcast easy. True. I think. I like too that we're hanging out more. Have you noticed that? Yeah. I think. I mean, especially over the pandemic, Sad Boys was the conduit for that, which is kind of how Sad Boys started back up again. But. Yeah, but that was also tough because it was like only the show, and we couldn't mm -hmm. hang out, and, and, and so time difference. And we've been able to have outings where we can just hang out as people and one it provides like a shared experience but two it's like we get to uh, have a friendship that exists outside of work work which is necessary yes we did have a nice dinner out with all the homies oh yeah we did yeah. we had a team we had a team dinner 
uh, while some folks were in town and uh, it was really nice. It was nice to get everyone, everyone together, especially because it takes a lot of hands these days to put together this show. Um, like for example, Jacob, um, on the keys, <laughs> Jacob, Jacob has so many hands. <laughs> um, and Jacob has a hand per key. I'm super, I'm super grateful. Anastasia pointed out, um, that it was like our first team dinner that wasn't just me and her. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. cause Anastasia was the first person that, um, I hired like in 2019 because I needed someone to professionally, um, what is it called? The ADHD thing when you, uh, Oh, body doubling, body doubling. Yeah. It was like, literally it started as like, can you be my professional body double? Yeah. Because I, I need someone else to be there while I'm working and I'm like making enough money to where that I could afford to have someone help me. But I am, my mental health was deteriorating and I was at like a very low place. And the career can't get any further with that. Yeah. Shout out, I mean, shout out to the content creators that do continue their, their grind and their grift, their grift, their graft, <laughs> their rise and their grind on just, you know, uh, doing 10 years on YouTube, only editing themselves, writing everything, so yeah. all that. I, I do think that is a mindset that I would be more susceptible to had I not worked in a career with delegation and a team. Yeah. And it is, it's, it's hard to communicate what you need from other people. And I, I understand the instincts and I want to do that. But I think Sad Boys in its current iteration and doing well, but also maybe at all would not exist if it weren't for the, the team. I think every time I see up. Jacob setting up for the show, I remember having to set up yeah. for the show and I'm like, God, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and then sit down and just be like, is the fucking thing running? Yeah, and I'm like, uh, uh, the amount of times that, oh, oh, uh, audition stop recording. Shit. Like, like shit like that. Oh, Dude, one of the cameras oh is my off. God. Like the amount to which now I can like be a little bit more free. However, I do need to pivot us off of this point because we're getting a little long in the record and we did something very special right before we started this episode, uh. Uh, which is... Those will recall we did an episode a couple weeks ago about the Squid Game reality show, which ended, by the way. And I do have thoughts about the ending, but I will save them for another time. Uh, I'll watch the rest. I'll at least watch the ending and we can talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, you should, because it's funny, dude. Um, that will be a spoiler warning. But we had a we got an email after that episode from Spencer, number 299, from the Squid Game reality show, who was the umbrella man who um went viral for he went viral because of his his nervousness and his like uh like i don't even know how to describe it just because he was um very emotional uh it was it was i mean it was framed to kind of present it as a panic attack i don't know yeah. if it literally was yeah, but it, it was you know it's a high stress situation and extremely tense and it's scary and hardcore and the shoot by all accounts was pre pretty intense as well and it was a was you know it was a meme it was a viral meme of like this guy snaps the whatever and he falls over and right. he's, he's stressed out and yeah, he's gagging exactly. and it's like well yeah it's it's rough <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't know. and so then we talked about how spencer uh didn't have his full story showed i mean you how could you because it's a 456 contestant show but they present spencer as such a coward yeah in they, the show they, they, and, and and he is far from he is far from that and we spencer sent us an email um thanking us for our coverage on the show which is very kind of spencer you'll see that spencer is a very kind person because we got to talk to spencer today criminally kind the kindest boy with with a, a kind th a huge adversity transformed into even more kindness. I mean, I like it. Even I mean, you will just have to hear it from the Spencer's mouth. <laughs> um, we've got uh, got a little interview for you and we're, that just happened right before um, right before we started this episode uh, with with Spencer. Thanks so much for joining us. Of course, of course. Oh my gosh. To just get us started, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and how you ended up on Squid Game uh, the reality competition. The ultimate challenge or whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's a bit of a story. Um, I'll say it like this. So a few years ago, I had cancer. Um, and when I recovered from that, I decided the two most important things in my life were connections with people and memorable experiences. And so moving forward from that, um, 
one of the things I really wanted to do was work on a feature film at one point. So the fall of my junior year of college, I had the opportunity to work as a PA on a feature film. And I was there in Atlanta and I was really exhausted. And I got back to the hotel after like a 13 hour day. Um, and then I opened up my phone, uh, and opened the YouTube app out of instinct. And the first ad with big banner said, like apply now squid game the challenge and i'm wow. like what is this this is to be and i'm so used to like seeing weird things or like like the mr beast scam ads that are like right they're fake mr. fake beast. mr beast yeah yeah and so I, I was thinking it was something like that but i clicked on it and it like i saw like affiliations with netflix and it seemed legit and so i applied um <laughs> because i thought um this seems like a memorable experience and if i win then i would be able to have the money to be able to take care of the people i care about as well as the opportunity to meet so many other people with interesting stories. Yeah. And so yeah. capitalize on that, that new goal you have. Congratulations on beating cancer, by the way. I mean, I'm sure Thank you, you. you're probably <laughs> sick of hearing that from people. But <laughs> it is, uh, I think it's very admirable that you managed to kind of displace the trauma from that into something positive in the long term and, and makes yeah, a hell of a lot of sense that you would, you would do this thing. This opportunity pops up, sounds really interesting, sounds extremely unique. And so you, you know, seems pretty reasonable to me that you would say yes to something like that yeah i know for sure <laughs> um jumping into the show itself uh the question i had down was what are your thoughts about how the show was edited like i don't know if you got a chance to actually watch the edited version of the show versus like what your experience was your lived experience i think you miss so many stories because mm. there's 456 people and each of them has their own reason that they're there and each right. of them that I just had a chance to speak with while there or since then, I feel like they all have very interesting lives. And um, I think that like in the show, that's grasp for very few people. Like even, I feel like even Trey and Leanne, the mother and son who you see so much, right. I feel like you know so little about them from yeah. their time on the show. I would agree I feel with like that. I didn't know that I would be on the show at all. Because mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, there's 456 people. Yeah, right. And I have no idea how, what the edit's going to be. I Absolutely. watched the show for the first time with everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so and like Love um, Is Blind, you know, you're there's con like a another show, a Netflix show. It's like there's tons of people that end up getting engaged that were never actually on the show because it didn't fit the narrative. So you'll read about like there are a couple couples that like didn't make it in the show because of you know it just like didn't fit so the edit. That yeah, must have yeah, been yeah. quite. It was kind of a uh jump scare for you right when you see how much you, you're suddenly like oh it's spencer <laughs> a bit, a bit. i think they they definitely gave me a hint i think uh in the week or two before it came out they're like they try to be mindful of like warning people of things so that they can be prepared to see it um and so i was that's when i found out that i'd be on it i still had no idea what would be there right and it's still, like mind is pressed to remember what exactly happened <laughs> and what i said um so that was interesting yeah, I feel like I was one of the few people that you get a more of a glimpse into. And I feel like even then, it's such a small glimpse into who right. I am. That makes sense. Yeah, there, you know, uh, it is a tough challenge to try to represent a show. Like the premise of the show, they're already off on the wrong foot because 456 <laughs> people is like an impossible digest. number of people to grasp. And so I feel like the only time you really even grasp it is that the drone aerial shots of like everyone. <laughs> Um, Which mm -hmm. makes it very hard to track along with any particular characters to to care for. Which just, I mean, I you know, I know they don't want to bias the show towards any one people, or they want it to be a surprise who lives or who dies. But you know, it's TV, and it would be nice, especially since it mm -hmm. beyond just yours that we've heard first person. I mean, that mm -hmm. there are no boring people when they're doing something strange and extraordinary right and it's yeah no the casting team had their work cut out for them that's the show it yeah. feels like it should be like i'm not just doing this challenge i'm doing it for these reasons i mean that's what squid game the show is like, yeah that, that's also if it was just followed all 456 characters in that show and every single one of them mm -hmm. was like yeah i want to get some money and then <laughs> just, like, did not go into why or how when we were looking into the show and the production of the show for the episode we did a few weeks ago there were stories about how the shooting of the red light green light yeah. thing was a disaster like what was your experience like for that it was a difficult time <laughs> um, i bet it was a challenge. I will say that that woman who was holding the squat, she held a squat for longer than I think I could have. 
Um, yeah, and in the walk. show, it's like it just cuts back to her immediately after going, oh, I landed in a squat, and then she just falls over. Based on the edit, you could be like, he can hold a squat longer than that. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like, good, yeah. Exactly. Um, I wish I had a clock to say how long exactly it took. But the, I mean, the one other thing that's really clear is when you like, uh, if you see the poses people are holding in, uh, you can see people standing like still or they're laying down because they're wanting to hold the pose. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. And you can also see people. Um, I don't know. Some people have their hands in their pockets. Right. It might be a little cold. Right. Right. Yeah. There I guess a, we did hear some of that. There are a ton of times where people dive on the ground. And I was curious about <laughs> these complete mm -hmm. like, like panically. And I, I assumed it was uh, like some miscalculation of like, then I won't get shot. But <laughs> I'll be a smaller target, or something, but it's, it's, they forgot about the die pack. But that makes way more sense if there was a game of musical chairs with 45 minute intervals between each round. I'd be like, I'm getting the chair. <laughs> I'm going to sit down on the chair. So like half the people roughly make it through red light, green light. And so then they do the big reveal of the, the bunks that everybody's sleeping in. That's like 200 people sleeping in the same room. Is that like how it actually went down? Yeah, no, for sure. Is I that not it. the mo I was gonna say, is that not the most disruptive sleeping experience you could possibly imagine? Well, I mean, I'm a little chaotic and I feel like I'm able to fall asleep easily. Um, I, every class in college, if it was not like, if it was lecture based, I would fall asleep during it. Um, <laughs> I fall asleep Sport. on airplanes. I fall asleep in the airport. Um, right. So this so, was, this was easy for you. This is a cakewalk. The yeah, sleeping. No, I mean, that was cozy. I, I felt like I had lots of people around me, and so I could just, like, share funny stories that was worth falling asleep. And, Aww. you know, that was peaceful. <laughs> was there, I mean, any disruptive? I mean, God, take a couple hundred people, put them in a big bunking. I Somebody's like a some snorer, people, yeah. Somebody's a snorer. Yeah, I, no, like I definitely heard stories people about people the, being loud snorers. But um, the people that were upset. And there's also, like, like LED lights for safety, and so it's definitely oh. not pitch black. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, God, it's like a CIA black site. <laughs> Just like you can't sleep. <laughs> Wait, yeah. yeah, so so it was it was like a dim but not completely dark when you slept? Yeah, for safety. I see. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, so, I mean, it's definitely darker a lot. So, I mean, I was able to sleep fairly well. Did they but, give you, like, yeah. mass sleep masks and stuff? <laughs> they didn't give us sleep masks. All right. I mean, I'm sure people would be, like, covered their... I think I might have put my shirt over my face yeah. or something. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the, I mean, the, it's it's sometimes hard to separate. One of the reasons I'm, I'm grateful that we can talk to you is sometimes it's hard to separate kind of the fiction of the edit, which as long as it's not too manipulative is, is, is fine. We know, you know, nothing could be 100% authentic. But the food situation... Ooh, that yeah. seemed so unnecessarily cruel versus like is that complete is that legitimately they were just giving out what was it a can a person and um i mean we were fed three times a day mm -hmm. um i wasn't able to count the calories exactly <laughs> i was <laughs> it was for sure not food that i'd be eating outside the dorms but i mean it was a challenge it taught me a lot that i'm addicted to sugar <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah know. I a lot is because um, I think as soon as I got out, I went back to eating like a, a huge pack of cookies. Oh, no. I, yeah. That, I think you earned it at that point. Spencer, you're being infectiously oh, okay. positive. <laughs> you're being, you're yeah. taking all these positive life lessons from this. Stop it right now. <laughs> I'm trying to. I mean, it's, I mean, I feel like you got to learn from life. That's true. Yeah. I, and I think you've, you've done a lot for a lot of people by being an open advocate about this. How is the, have you felt the reaction overall to you speaking out? I think I've been surprised with how much love I've received. Mm. Um, I think at least on Instagram, where I spent most of my time right, right now. <laughs> Wise. It's been a lot of people who have taken the time to find me and follow me. It has been supportive. Um, I haven't really gone on Twitter, and so I hear that's more of a mess. Um, I mean, also probably best for everyone to stay off of Twitter, just as a general. <laughs> um, I think TikTok also been well received uh, yeah tiktok has also been very kind as well for the most yeah because i was going to say you've been sharing some of your stories on tiktok you know we that's how we found um that you were that you were posting about your experience on the show and reception has been has been good there yeah for sure i mean there's like a few i'd say there's a few more trolls on tiktok than there's been yeah. on instagram overall i think some of the funniest things is just seeing what um people have dm'd me <laughs> since the show since i've never really had dms before right um, 
So I think some of the some of the more interesting ones is a lot of people have asked me if I'm autistic since the show has come out. Interesting. <laughs> it's like I don't think so. But I guess like <laughs> some of the people are asking me that like I don't know, maybe I'll ask a doctor at some point. Right. Uh, and then the other one thing is just that uh because of I mentioned like questioning some things religiously, a lot mm -hmm. of people have sent me their own religious beliefs and insisted that's how I'd find peace. And so it's a little <laughs> flat, but also oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, I was hoping that it would be people who like have also questioned things and they found, you know, they could relate to your story. Mm -hmm. Have you gotten any of that? No, for sure. There's like some people who are finding peace that they see someone else questioning. And then there's also people with very set beliefs, whether some sect of Christianity or Islam or um, right. Buddhism. I've yeah, gotten yeah. a lot of <laughs> and I appreciate all the people sharing their kindness with me. Yeah. It is you're, be, you're being so nice, Spencer. <laughs> it's 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 not very British of you. <laughs> I'm being too British. No, it's very really sweet. I think it's very nice that you you've processed it, you've taken so much out of it. Uh and I do think regardless of what comments are, are or aren't coming in, countless people will be getting something out of that, especially when you talked about you know, different people reacting to different circumstances in different ways. I think that is like, that's something that wasn't represented in the edit, but also that um, people probably uh, don't account for when they get the, the distance of, of uh, TV or anonymity or whatever is kind of treating it like, well, I guess I, I understand this person. I saw I saw the complete story of how this person right. operates exactly. as opposed to like, yeah, you got a quick shot of like the sleeping arrangements, but most people aren't going to take into account. Yeah, the fire exits are keeping the space not completely dim and people are tired yeah. and they're on their feet for huge periods of time and they're overwhelmed. I mean, being around hundreds of people for days mm -hmm. is, is itself just really tiring. Do, do you keep in touch with anyone from the show or any friends that you met on the show? Yes, I'd say that, um, well, I mean, not, right when the show was finished filming, they didn't want us to be in touch with one another. And so mm. um, because of confidentiality until the show comes out to find out right. what happens. But I'd say that like as soon as the show came out, I tried to reach out to more people. And I was really excited by the fact that I was able to join uh, some of Netflix's publicized events to be able to see some of the people cool. that made it so much further in the show that I hadn't seen in so long. Right. And so right. I'd say I think there are some friendships that I made on the show that will last a very long time. That's awesome. That's great. The one piece of irony too, I think, is that most of my best friends from the show were in that umbrella line with me. <laughs> oh, oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, so hopefully they didn't give you such a hard time. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I think the show has been successful, uh, but there's also been like a lot of critique uh, and, and like bad PR for certain ways that the show handled certain things do you get the impression that like netflix is learning from some of their mistakes that they've made because you know the cynical thought is well the show is really successful they just wrapped up the season now they're casting season two and it seems like it's mm -hmm. full steam ahead but hopefully if they're gonna if they are gonna continue hopefully they can like learn some lessons from this yeah i mean i'd like to think that a big company with lots of money will learn I mean, I, I, I don't pretend to say what I would know any of their faults are inherently. Like, sure, as I watch it as a viewer and of someone who went through an experience and I'm like, oh, I wish they could have shared more people's stories. But I also like, I have no idea how they do that in practicality. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah, no, for sure. But that's okay, because I think like giving that feedback, it's their, they get paid the big bucks to figure that out, right? And I think, no, exactly. you know, it's and like our job as consumers to have can. thoughts. Yeah. I'll say that like, I think the people that I had the chance to meet who worked for Netflix. I was very grateful for them. And I appreciated each one of them. And so I think it's also really funny that a lot of people view Netflix as like an organization, but now I'm able and fortunate enough to have a position where like I can put a face to some people. For sure. And that is a very kind face that is in my mind. Yeah, and I think that's a good thing to call out is that like for any company that's huge and has like a lot of power and influence, you can criticize the company as a as a whole, but the individuals who are working there are usually well-meaning, very nice people. Um, and, and it's important to like separate the two. I'm sure nobody on that set wanted you to be shooting in the cold, doing red light, green light <laughs> exactly. for nine hours. You know, it's 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 an unfortunate circumstance, but yeah, mm -hmm. say, it seems like it's, I'm really glad that there were people who got to stay in touch with. What was the, how much time in between filming and the show's release? 
Oh, I think we filmed back in January. So I was honestly wow. so surprised how fast they were able to edit everything. Yeah. Given like the scope of everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess there is probably a lot of pressure time crunch because, you know, Squid Game as a IP is like, you know, it's drifting away. Like the, the as it drifts further away, it's like time is of the essence to try to cap capitalize on what's left of that moment. Um, but before we wrap up, is there are there any stories um, that you want to share from your time or any like wacky things that happened that we didn't get to see? I think there was one moment in the dorms when people like made a volleyball court with like their jackets and they were oh, playing like a little bit of volleyball whoa. game. Oh, yeah. So I'll just say that like lots of silly things happen in the dorms that you don't get <laughs> to see. Yeah. Uh, because so much time was there. Um, yeah, for sure. It's hard to tell from um, from the actual editing of the show, but it's edited like every single day is a challenge day, and it's like a new mm -hmm. a new day, and then people are like eliminated that day. Is that how it actually was, or were there some days that are it, like? It yeah, for sure, it took a bit longer. I mean, all the time was in the dorms, but yeah. I don't know exactly how long the people who were there till the end were. I know that I think I my time in London was a little under a week. Mm -hmm. um, I think that includes like the quarantine beforehand and right. whatnot until I flew back. Oh yeah. Makes so sense. it was, I think overall pretty fast, but also a little bit longer than they portray it to be. Yeah. It, yeah. I bet it feels like much longer though when you're in it. Like uh, I can only imagine. Without your creature comforts and-, and you're, Without thing. cookies, you know? <laughs> yeah, cookie free. <laughs> you can say that again. <laughs> oh, I um, Which I also think is so ironic that I just love so cookies so much and I bake them all the time. And then <laughs> this was my moment on the show. That's <laughs> very funny. Well, Spencer, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if there's anything that you want to share, you know, with our audience or with like the world at large before we wrap up of any of anything, like feel free, you have the floor. Well, I think uh, first and foremost, I just like to say thank you both for your kindness and being able to I don't know, speak with me. One thing that I think I'm grateful about for this is, well, I while I'm a software engineer, I double majored in theater and computer science. And oh, hell yeah. I am very goal-oriented and ambitious. And so one of the things that I have spent so much time doing is I wrote a play. And I like found a local theater that I'm going to produce that at, and I'm so excited by it. But all my family lives completely across the country. And so something I just started doing about a month and a half ago was producing it like digitally. Oh. And like, this was before I found out I was gonna be on the show. Right. And so now I'm almost able to finally share that with the world. And I meant to share that with just my family, but now it's something that like, I guess, oh, other people might wanna see this. And right. so it's just funny and silly that like, I made this little thing and I enjoy it. And now there's other people who enjoy me. And so I'm excited that they might be able to enjoy this as well. Where is the best place for people to keep an eye out for that? I will post updates on Instagram at Spencer underscore 299. Um, it will eventually be on Spotify and YouTube. There will be a, <laughs> I think explicit is a bit of a, um, <laughs> it's not exactly explicit, but there's a there's a few pieces of profanity and I have nieces and nephews. I and see. so I'm also making a clean version so that okay. I feel comfortable with my little five-year-old cousins listening. Right, right. Makes sense. Well, awesome, Spencer. Thank you so much. It's been no, an absolute joy to chat. And I think the last thing I'll say is that my friends would hate me if I didn't tell you thank you on all their behalves. Like they listened to you guys even before I did. And, oh, that's so uh, cool. They send me your videos, so. Oh, that's so cool. Well, thank you so nice. much. Thanks to your friends as well. Well, you guys have a wonderful day. You are amazing. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Cheers. Spencer, you're, you're amazing, amazing. Spencer. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Isn't he the nicest? Oh, he's so sweet. I literally cannot imagine. I don't think I've ever met a sweeter person. It was a really nice way to kick off the recording. As we, as we say, we, we normally get here, do the setup, hang out for a little bit, main episode, Patreon episode. And this time we started off with a, essentially like a motivational talk. Yeah. It was, it was just a nice man. Yeah. Spencer is the sweetest. And um, turns out that some of Spencer's friends were fans of ours. And uh, so shout out to them as well. But yeah, that's such a funny gig that we have where we can just like, I, I kind of want to do that more. Talk to people that yeah, that was fun. we, you know, have some connection to. Also, uh, everybody should check out, I think, I mean, we mentioned it in the interview, I'm sure, but 
Spencer's socials, he went into detail on a lot of the nuances of the show, his experiences and friends' experiences, and and check those out. That's kind of the reason he's a very prominent figure related to the show now. Yeah. He, yeah. I do want to talk to somebody who had a more negative experience because uh, I love how Spencer has processed everything, but at the same time, I'm like, give it to me. You give it to me hard. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. Okay. <laughs> Keep that in. Jacob's telling me we can't cut it. Uh, <laughs> There's something wrong with Sorry. the footage. Yeah, the delete button's broken. The delete uh, button is not uh, working, it turns <laughs> out. That stinks. I mean, give me the real nitty gritty. Give me the bad stuff. Nope. Dub over what he said this time with the original <laughs> audio the way he said it the first time. <laughs> and yeah. it's already happened and Jacob's telling uh, me it cannot be uh, done. Gosh. Play it after the credits of this episode as well. Yeah. Slow oh, up. man. But uh, anyway, thanks to Spencer for joining us. And I think that's the that's the show for today. That's enough pod. Right here. Ah. On this on this thing. Uh. But right after this, we're hopping over to patreon.com slash sadboys for oh. Sadboys Nights. Oh. It's the premium Patreon podcast no. hosted by what's wrong with you are you mad you're in it no he's not okay oh he's happy he's laughing now he, i can't really read no. it at all oh god um it's gonna be a lot of emotion so <laughs> i think it's that that devilish panera drink bro dude i looked over at it and i had a flashback <laughs> um over there we're gonna be well one i'm gonna show jordan the horny chef the new horny chef that austin and i discovered in the last episode of sad boys nights oh and um with no all the content can be in there because this one's on patreon baby. yeah we can do anything we want what um, are you, like what uh, like watch i don't know watch stuff kind of like maybe. what we do normally yeah. but just like again just more yeah yeah <laughs> exactly the same advice. yeah exactly the same but with more um <laughs> And then maybe we'll watch the hotel chef, the guy who made food in the airplane bathroom. Oh, yeah. I don't know what the hell that's about, man. Yeah. That's really criminal. To be, like, the way that makes me feel is, like, so... It's the exact opposite of the horny chef. Where right. I, the horny chef, I can't look away, but it's, it's fascinating, and I can't quite understand it. The hotel chef, the, the cooking in the bathroom is too simple. It's too... I'm just like, oh, it's just a weird person. I don't like that. So... We will be jumping into that over on Sadboys Nights, but we end every episode of Sadboys with a particular phrase. We love you. And we're sorry. Boom. <laughs> but actually, uh, we're trying a new thing now where we're going to start Sadboys Nights at the end of this episode. We're going to give a little teaser so people can see what it is. Oh, sick. So, hello and welcome back to Sadboys Nights. Uh, yeah. The premium Patreon podcast Help where me. two particularly posturous boys yeah pose predominantly po politely politely posted posthumously we die we die <laughs> <laughs> um, that would be a very odd what if we recorded just such a good episode mm -hmm. tom cruise is the guest did we have a spectacular 10 hour long podcast yeah and then we both die on Thursday. I mean, hey. We gotta put the episode out on Friday. Do we get buried together? What, you, in the same coffin? Or Not same, in the same like, coffin, <laughs> but like side by side, like a married couple or something. Yeah, what about like a wide transparent one that is the couch? Or a stone oh, etching yeah. of the couch with the noodle blanket? Yeah, they we get like a some sort of sculpture of the noodle blanket <laughs> it's a, it's a, that shot from the live show where it says love acquired and we're yeah. just fist bumping the air um well so that so that these like little freaks that are getting a little bonus okay. getting a little free bonus uh can see let's let's jump into the the sexy chef Oh no. Oh, raw chicken is oh, just no. never. Oh hey, no. Go. Look up. Oh, no. no. Wait, no. wait. wait. Whoa. Pause it. He just. Gucci girl. Gucci girl. How you doing? How you moving, girl? Moving, girl. How's your day looking? That future girl. Future girl. Yeah, we on now. Take my money. Go away. Are you wanting? Guys are rich for me.